also talking about organic molecules and our discussion today is actually going to be on um, carboxylic acids as well as esters so um as with everything the first thing that you have to do is actually to define uh, what carboxylic acids are as well as what are esters as you'll see later in this in this lesson so how do we identify carboxylic acids these are those compounds with um a functional group a carboxyl so their functional group is called carboxyl they have a carboxyl functional group and what does it look like it actually looks something like this so you normally you'd have your carbon which is double bonded to oxygen and on the on the other end this carbon also will be bonded to oxygen that is remember here is a single bond and that um that thing oxygen is bonded to um what do you call this hydrogen so it's almost like you, you have your so so you have your almost like your hydroxy group and then as well as this double bond and then combined we call it carboxyl it's a carboxyl functional group and that's how you normally um identify it right so now in terms of naming i'm not gonna do a lot of them because the rules are pretty much uh, the same similar for all of them if you know the basics if you understand the basics in terms of naming then it's just easier for you to to label different kinds of of molecules so now i'm gonna try to draw a a structure a structural formula that has uh, three carbons on it here is a single bond and then on this carbon let us assume that you have that double bond then you have that oxygen hydrogen bond there so it's one two three four one two one two three four h h h h h so how do we um how do we what is it how do we name this particular molecule or this particular compound so it's still pretty much the same we first say okay how many carbons do we have we see that we have three carbons we can start labeling from there one two three we have three carbons meaning it's going to be propan remember prop this prefix means three it's propan but then the interesting thing with um carboxylic acid is that when you name them the end should always be oic acid so that will be your suffix that will be the end of your of your naming so now let's just add that so we have three and then because it's a carboxylic acid you have to add oic acid so this means that this would actually this this compound the specific compound would actually be propanoic acid right let us now take another example where instead of three carbons we have four right i'm just gonna finish this quickly so because there's four we know that our suffix is going to be butane or butane because it's a carboxylic acid and we've identified it using this functional group that we've spoken about the c double bond as well as the uh, the oh single bond there you have to end with oic acid and then the whole entire thing now is just called butanoic acid right so this this thing just continues meaning if it had um if this structure had uh, maybe let's say two two carbon atoms it would now become ethan you know, remember f means two our prefix so is going to be ethan because it was a carboxylic acid then we would have ethanoic acid which would uh, look something like this we have a c a, a, there are two carbons a double bond o and then that single bond oh and then you have your your hydrogens there so they're pretty straightforward to to name now what are we going to talk about um is that we're going to talk about next we're going to talk about esters and we're going to define what esters are and how do we actually identify them so something interesting happens um when we perhaps react a an, an alcohol 
remember what alcohols are they have that oh group right and we react this alcohol with um a carboxylic acid what we've just spoken about now and remember to identify them we identify by that group c double bond with a single bond oh there this is a single bond this marker is so stubborn to wipe it just makes like a huge mess okay and what we get on that if we react these two compounds is that we get something that is called an ester is it a double bond or is it a single bond? It's the double E or I think it's a single E. So we get an ester, right? So that is how we normally define um, um, esters. And this process, this whole um, reaction is normally called esterification. We're going to talk about it later on when we talk about organic reactions. For now, I'm just giving you a, a brief overview of it. So now let us take an example. Let us react ethanol. Ethanol plus, let's say, propanoic acid. By now, you should know how to draw the these structures, right? So ethanol, F means two carbons, and then it has a that OH there at the end to show that it's an alcohol. And then we react it with propanoic acid. Propan means that there are three carbon atoms. I hope I have space. And then oic acid means that it's a carboxylic acid, so you can identify it using its functional group, that carboxyl functional group. So it would look something like this. So now the molecule that we're going to get what do you think it's going to look like? So that molecule is going to be made of two parts. The, the part that comes from the alcohol and the part that comes from, from your acid, right? So from, from your alcohol, we're going to remove, a, this H is going to be removed. And then from your acid, or in this case it's propanoic acid, from your carboxylic, carboxylic acid, we actually going to remove this OH. So now you must you must be aware of something. So we're removing two two hydrogens and an oxygen, meaning that you're gonna form an ester plus H two O, which is water, right? Okay. So let's let us write it down. So we remove uh, the the H from here. So we have C. We just so we have C meaning we're going to be left with something like this O without the what you call without the hydrogen and then if from this side we decide to remove the OH we're going to be left and I want you to, to look at this carefully we're going to be left with this C so I'm starting from this side which is bonded to a double bond and then bonded to two to another carbon which is bonded to another carbon as well So that is what um, your your molecule is going to look like. And when we name them, this is important. When we name them, the part that comes from from the alcohol, we will just say because it, it comes, it will become a sort of a an alkyl. So because it's ethanol, it's going to become ethyl. If it was uh, propanol, it was going to become propyl. And the part that comes from uh, the acid, it's just going to be propan still propan but then because it's an ester it's no longer it's going to be propan it's going to be noid and this is how we write it so our molecule actually is ethyl propanoid so ethyl propanoid let us make another example let us take let us say in this instant we had propanol propanol plus ethanoic acid So we know what propanol looks like. It has three carbon atoms bonded to that um, So there we are. So it's an H there. 
ethanoic acid means it's just two carbons and then because it's in the carboxylic acid the signature is that that is your um what you call this thing the carboxylic your thing your functional group right so you're still the same from from the alcohol we're still taking the h removing the h and then from the from the acid from the carboxylic acid we're removing the oh so meaning from this side you're just going to be left with this sort of a structure like this and then we're gonna join it to this end in which uh, oh was taken so that end starts you see a double bond and it's connected to it's bonded to another carbon there so to name it again the part that comes from um from the alcohol becomes a sort of an alkyl right because you've removed the h so meaning if it was propanol now it becomes propyl propyl and this part that comes from ethanoic acid becomes ethanoic however you pronounce it meaning this is actually going to be propyl ethanoic right okay so now just to finish off this discussion before we go off let us take two 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 molecules let us say we had let me draw a line here let us say we had a molecule such as this one and then so because of this you can almost tell that it's an ester right and then let us take another molecule we're going to compare these two molecules and then okay i'm not done let me not get ahead of myself and then because of this you can tell that it's a carboxylic acid i hope that it's clear how we identify carboxylic acids right so let us name them this is this one is easy to note we have two uh carbons so it means it's just ethanoic acid and this one remember we just named it an ester this is the part that so now which part do you think comes from the alcohol the part that comes from the alcohol is the part that doesn't have the double bond so here it means that this part doesn't have the double bond and it comes from a, an alcohol it comes from methanol so alcohol that only has one carbon so it means it's going to be methyl and then also if you notice even our the, the the carboxylic acid that was involved in making this ester also had one carbon so it's going to become methyl methanoid methanoid i hope i'm spelling this correctly but you should know the correct spelling right methyl methanoid right so now let us write um their um, what is it their molecular formula so how many carbons do we have here we have two carbons so it's c2 how many hydrogens one two three four four hydrogens how many oxygens one two oh two let us write the molecular formula for this how many carbons it's two carbons how many hydrogens one two three four it's four hydrogens how many oxygens it's two so you're noticing something the molecular formula the molecular formula of these two compounds here that we compared is the same i know now my 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 bot looks very ugly but i'm hoping that you are still able to follow their molecular formula looks the same however the functional group is different this is an ester this is a carboxylic acid and we've already spoken about isomers so now what we define this um types of molecules where uh, the molecular formula is the same but they have different functional groups we call those functional isomers so and it's also important for you to be able to kind of identify them so without wasting any time let's just end this lesson and in the next lesson we're going to talk about aldehydes as well as ketones